Welcome back, everybody. We're also glad to be here with you today. This is the sixth module of Learn Spiritism session, and we're going to be talking about discarnation. Let's get started. The definition of discarnation, according to Emmanuel the Spirit, is as follows. To discarnate is to move as somebody moves from one city to another in the physical realm, affecting neither the illnesses nor the virtues with a simple modification of the exterior aspects. What he's trying to say is that discarnation is to go from one place to the other. It's to move our physical body from this stage that we are right here to a new stage. And the important piece to understand is that it does not mention that all of our illnesses and all of our virtues will come with us. Those are not left back not left behind. The other definition that we have for discarnation is the liberation of the soul from the physical body. So when our souls are liberated from our physical bodies, the free spirit detaches from all the material related forces and as a consequence, we regain freedom of action and self-confidence. So, the moment we discarnate, the moment we do or we go through the so-called material death of our physical body. We gain forces. Our senses are expanded. We're back into the spirit realm. We're back into our real life, as we've mentioned before. And the reason why we say discarnation is because we as spirits, we would never die. Our physical bodies, yes, they will die. They'll be buried, they'll be cremated, they'll be, you know. But we spirits, will never die. And by these definitions, the authors are telling us that it's a transformation from one segment, from one realm to the next. Continuing, this whole separation of the soul and the body, as you can see here, once that link is detached, our souls are free. We become free again from this material sheath that wraps us up, wraps our spirits up. The moment the soul detaches, and that process is gradual, the moment we're detached from the material body, we don't, we don't come back. There's no more coming back. The moment somebody is detached, or a spirit is detached from a body, there's no coming back. That's why many people have witnessed or, or have read about near-death experiences. Scientists, they're investigating people there. They went almost to the culprit of this carnation and they were taken back to their physical bodies. And sometimes they even relate what happened. They see a tunnel. Great, a lot of good experiences from different many authors out there. Really worth uh, checking them out. And that detachment, that link, can be either fast or may last for days, months, or even you know, years sometimes. As a rule of thumb, the more attached to the matter, the more attached to our bodies, the harder it will be for us to separate from it. That's why it's really important for us to really tune our thoughts, tune our minds, tune our priorities with the spirit world and not with the material world. What about the sensation? What really happens when we are discarnating? What really happens when we are moving from one stage to the next? The discarnation as Ellen Kardec mentions, depends on the life. What kind of life? How much remorse? How much shame? How much problems we have caused? All of that's going to take into, be taken into consideration and will be alleviated by the liberation. Or the moment we are free from our physical bodies, all of those will take in a different perspective and we will understand why we are still causing harm or we are still uh, carrying out those wrongdoings. As mentioned previously, all of our illnesses, all of our virtues will come with us. They will not stay here. That's why it's really important to make amendments, really important to forgive and to ask for forgiveness to all of those that have caused harm or those who have harmed us in the past. Spiritual perturbation or obsession, if you will, sometimes. Ellen Kardec very wisely mentions in the Spirit's book that the moment of discarnation, the moment of death, 
Everything appears confused. It's blur. We don't see exactly what's going on. The soul takes time to recover its self-consciousness. Even other authors mention that it's relative, or it's almost the same as us coming back from an anesthesia state. By our souls gradually gaining clearness of thought, or really gaining awareness, we're past that time, or we're past that awakening in, a, in the uh, spiritual world. We have let go our material envelope to the past. Now there's a new window, a new opportunity for us to go back in the spirit world and evaluate how well you know, our reincarnation was. What about the knowledge of spiritism? It really helps us with considerable influence in the duration of our discarnation. Because the more we know, the more knowledge we acquire, the more we get to know about how the discarnation process is going to be. What are the consequences? What are the implications? The moment we get to know there, it's going to be easier for us when we get there because we already know what we can expect. But ultimately, the practice of moral good behaviors during throughout our lives, those are going to be the key factors, the really important factors that's going to drive our discarnation to be a peaceful and a short one. Continuing with types of discarnation. There are natural causes of discarnation, and there are causes that we may commit discarnation ourselves. Let's talk about the natural causes first. So we may discarnate through accidents, through homicide, through illnesses, or through suicide. As Emmanuel very wisely mentioned, with the exception of the suicide, all discarnation causes are determined previously by spiritual forces that guides the man's activities on earth. As we would like to say, there are only two fatalities in our lifetime, the moment we were born and the moment we will discarnate, given it's a natural cause. Those two are set in stone in terms of that moment, that moment, is already planned for us, how that's going to happen, or what are the, the, uh, the situation that's going to entail. However, that is the other causes of discrimination that we may cause themselves. For example, the most you know, uh, important one is suicide. So when it comes to suicide, those are the cause of discrimination that we caused ourselves. If we decide to commit suicide, there will be huge repercussions in our next you know, moments ahead of discarnation. And there's also the indirect suicide by not really taking care of our own bodies, by really, you know, ingesting things that's going to be harmful for our own bodies, and so forth. Those are the causes of, you know, relative suicide that me, we may commit throughout our lifetime. So in all those types of discarnation, the important piece that's advised that we remember from this slide, the, the, all those types of discarnation with all of them, with the exception of suicide, all that has already been planned by the spiritual world. What about our responsibility facing discarnation? Andrew Lewis writes an amazing book called The Spiritist Conduct. And he got a couple of different uh, scenarios where he gives us some advice on how we should behave and how we should re re relate to or refer when it comes to the discarnation of our loved one or even from our friends and families and so forth. There are a couple interesting aspects of his works. First is that we need to send our good thoughts of respect, peace, affection, love to everybody that discarnates, everybody that goes back to the spirit world, without exception, really important. And he goes on and, and, and deeper in mentioning about memorial services. We should treat people that just passed away with respect, avoiding jokes, gossips, and improper, improper commentaries or conversations. The fellow human being or the fellow spirit who has just returned from, to the spirit world asks silently for our prayers, and our silence will help him recover faster. We should avoid as much as possible unnecessary talking like business conversations or deals during burials and, and, and memorials. It's really important that the memorial service is an act of respect to the human dignity. 
and we, if we are invited to attend a service. Let's remember, above all, Spiritism gives us the tools that are needed for us to really make a change in all, both our own lives and in people's lives. What about life beyond death? Many people ask about well, what is it to live after death? Or what's life out there like? There's a couple of interesting aspects of it. Death is just a process that every single one of us will experience. As soon as we awake in the spirit world, we need to deal with a lot of different things. A panoramic vision of our last existence. Things that we did well, things that we didn't do so well, and things that we need to go back and rework. A reacquisition of the old form. Getting back in shape, so to speak. Remember that? Going to the gym kind of thing? Yeah. Going to the gym for our moral difficulties or our moral wrongdoings. We're going to eventually meet up with friends, family members, all those loved ones who had passed before us. If there's still the spirit world, we'll be able to meet with them. We'll be able to really continue our friendship, our, our, our relationships, and so forth. This happens both to the enlightened and not so enlightened spirits. And also an analogy of the spiritual environment with a earthly landscape. So we understand that from a different perspective, a different paradigm, the environment that will be there is somewhat different than what we're used to on earth. And continuing... In summary, we will find ourselves, our true selves. What is it that I am? What is it that I need to still work on? What is it that I'm already able to conquer? I've already conquered in the past. That's going to be very visible to us when we discarnate, when we are removed from this material sheath, our bodies, our physical bodies, and hinders some time of our senses, our spiritual senses. Why? Shouldn't spiritists fear death? Spiritism gives us knowledge. Or, in other words, gives us an understanding that death doesn't exist. Our physical bodies will die. Yes, they will. But we as spirits will never die. So, the survival of the spirit after death is no longer a hypothesis, a philosophical question. It's a result of observation through mediumistic messages through spirits communicating with us, telling us how it is, how life is in the spirit world. The whole veil of ignorance is lifted up and the spiritual world appears to us in all its shape, form, and activity. It's not a matter of hope anymore, but it's a certainty that really can heal, that can comfort our hearts. Someone had passed, or we lost a loved one, we don't like the word losing a loved one because we never lose anybody. It's the passing of a loved one, and etc. We know that the future life is, in other words, the continuation of this life. Once we go from one grade to the other, it's just a continuation. New classroom, sometimes new classmates, new professors, new teachers. But in a nutshell, it's going to give us more opportunities for us to learn more, and etc. So, should we see the approach of discarnation as this whole liberation from the captivity? In other words, we are very limited, my dear friends, in this world, in this earthly you know, world. Our material bodies hinder our spirits to be able to develop or to carry out all of our senses. But that has a purpose. So we are here to carry out our activities, to learn, to make amendments, to fix wrongdoings in the past, to make a change in our own lives and the lives of others. But the moment we are removed from this environment, from this world, we're going to be in a much better shape and place. With that, we conclude the works of this carnation. If you need more information about it, please make sure to check out Heaven and Hell from Alan Kardec. There are a lot of great examples of spirits who just witnessed this carnation, those who came back and tell us how the moment went, and so forth. We encourage you to go so and visit, check out that book. It's an amazing works from Alan Kardec called Heaven and Hell. With that, wrap up this session. Thanks for viewing, and we hope to see you the next time. Thank you, and have a great day.